We fight the Clean Rot Knights in just about every run for that Golden Scarab Talisman, but would it be fun to play through the game as one? Legend has it, one was able to carry Melania all the way from Kaelid to the Halleck Tree. Could that mean their build could carry us? through millennia to watch these runs live follow me on twitch we're checking out more secret starting classes like this and the bloodhound knight all the time make sure you're subscribed i've definitely been the person who's watching all of someone's videos for months and not realizing i never subscribed just double check that you know now let's find out if this build is clean or rotten welcome to the fun Oh no, we're starting with farming? That kind of sucks. Remember how last week I said secret starting classes use gear that you can get 30 minutes into the game? Technically, this one can do that. You just have to have the luck of a god. That's why we're starting off as a prophet. Maybe we can get a bit of divine favor here. Cowabunga, Limgrave, get the horsey from Melina and fight a dog for a key. I'm going to try and avoid hitting stuff without the clean rock gear as long as possible, but sometimes a doggy just wants to block my keys. The strength tier won't help all that much, but saving Alex from a whole will help a lot, a lot later. Anastia ambushes us on the way to the silver pickle recipe and we die because we can't fight back. I didn't just, you know, get killed. That's a goddamn lie. Third church is another church, but this one has a physic flask and the worst physic tier in the game. So let's get better ones. Charged attack and stamina boost. Don't mind if I do. After briefly touching base at the round table hold, we get the Limgrave pickle and accidentally bait the knight's cavalry to fall off a bridge. Oh no. How could, how could this have happened? Ah, oh, sh oh, shoot. This will give us some early runes to get our vigor at a more comfortable place before we actually start a proper farm. Now we need a snack. Our snacks are in Lernia, and we might as well get two fingers in a hole. That'll boost our faith up by five for hotter fire if we want to use that for farming. There are three silver feet nearby, which will bring up our item discovery by 50 for two minutes. So now, let's get farming. We died. Well, we died instantly. The clean rots are weak to fire. I thought catch flame would be the ticket, but there's this thing about spells. They are... Okay, People have written me novels about this, so let's phrase it better. Spells are different than weapons in a worser kind of way. Catch Flame does great damage, comes out fast for a spell, but it's fast for a spell. You know what's faster? A weapon. There's also less dead frames after you cast it than most spells, but you know what has less dead frames than that? A weapon. It has better poise damage, interrupting enemies more than most small spells, but you know what has better poise damage? A weapon. Then add that its range is too small and forces us to stand next to blade woman in the poo poo swamp and then subtract the spear being longer even though it is literally called a short spear and that's how we decided to swap to the spear well if you just get radigan's icon boost your casting seal with 30 decks the fire scorpion charm the fire boosting tier go to the mountain tops of the giants for the fire giant seal into the giant conquering hero's grave and then hug me like my dad wouldn't catch flame would be better okay the spear is better right now because spells are trash Oh hey, I guess we could try it with Anna. Per her name, she's Polly and good for her. It works great. She beats the knight down so we don't have to, but then we can't rest because we summoned an NPC. So let's bring her into O'Neill and oh no, she, she died. RIP Pollyanna. I hope your partners can find more partners. So the sword is the most likely thing to drop with a 4% drop chance. Every piece of armor is 3% and the halo scythe is a 2% chance. Our odds are pretty bad, but anything that drops is good and we're rolling dice for each of them every time. Technically, it is possible for the sword, scythe, and all four armor pieces to drop the first kill. So technically, you could get all this stuff in the first 30 minutes of gameplay. We don't though. We die a few times while farming, but by the time we get to B drill or number 15 for those of you who don't count with Pokemon, we get the Halo Scythe. It's the lowest potential drop, but it's the best thing we could have gotten. See, it has innate bleed, which means we can grab the second pickle and then head back to the dragon barrel to swing away on some dragon toes. Now when we farm, we'll have a much more comfortable 39 vigor. But hey, what if we just got a little better? Scythes are farming implements and you wouldn't farm with subpar equipment, right? So let's head into Fort Faroth, get the Dectus piece one and get out alive. Then we can imagine being sapphic in Fort Height for the other piece. We're ready for Altus, but Altus isn't enough for me. I want to go into deep Altus. Raya has the keys, but she's mad that when I press X, it goes through her dialogue faster than pressing triangle. Please stop, brave I'm, I'm jumping. You will only that's jumping. I'm jumping. That's, that's jumping. Okay, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. 
Crab Man took her necklace, so we're gonna show him what's what. Unfortunately, Crab Man's got hands, and those hands are covered in balls that deal a lot of damage. We don't die, though. While he can dodge our rings a lot, he can't dodge the scythe swings as good. We bring that back to Raya, then go to Raya Lucaria. Totally different Raya's. Glad they're right next to each other in Lernia, and the jump doesn't kill us. Nice. Smarag is standing in front of the key. We don't have to kill them, but hey, I kind of want to, because this is a great place to show off the Michelin tires of light. Their tracking is super good. The damage is great. They come out really fast, and they don't cost that much mind. If only they dealt something other than holy damage. Because late game, and also mid game, and also early game, holy damage kind of sucks. We ran out of magic and had to use the scythe itself, but good news, gamers. It's long, it's strong, and it's good to get that bleed on. More good news, these floating beetles on the lake restore your blue flasks when they die, and Smarag just kills them sometimes. That means more Michelin tires of light. Again, we run out of magic, though. This thing is not leveled up yet. So we finish on the dragon's toes for a second time, without taking hit. That's a clean rot fight. School key acquired. Zoom through to the Bellum Highway, then drop down to the Crystal Cave. These miners can't jump, so we spam tires from the top. Then push another one off a cliff and defy gravity against one on the elevator. There's a bunch of somber stones on the way down, by the way. I just realized I didn't explain why we're here. The sword we're going to use later is a standard weapon, so we might as well fight the Crystallion. It will also let us warp out easier after we kill it. It throws rings at us from a distance. <laughs> I do that. But I do that better, and we win. All this time, I didn't get the grace after riding up the elevator. Instead, I just went right to Brian and warped to her parents' house. Whoops, that's gonna take some time later. There's a Somberstone 4 being held by a hand, but this hand has hands and just sort of mashes us into the wall. Attempt 2, we run to the Grace instead and stay back, spamming Destructo Discs, which works much better. Now we can get our Scythe up to plus 4. Volcano Manor has a Somberstone 5 and 6, but on the way we kill a snake and it drops the Manserpent Shield, which has a 3% drop rate. Didn't, I didn't need that, but happy we got lucky there. The Frog Mask gives us plus 4 Arcane, which is also plus 4 Item Discovery, and it's marginally better farming on for later. Can't forget that. Then the Somberstone 6 on top of the building, Somberstone 5 before the Godskin Noble, crank that shortcut, and you know, maybe we'll even go fight that Godskin Noble. I was a little too eager and forgot to level the Scythe up to plus 6, but even at plus 4 we do okay. Not great, the Noble has 40% holy resistance, which means our discs aren't doing much, but it has negative 10 slashing resistance, which is the normal attacks, in addition to some holy damage. We're still using the discs every now and then. They don't do a lot of stance pressure, but they stop it from resetting entirely, and they still chip away with damage, but it's not enough. We got rolled out. Let's try again with the correct level of damage. We lead with the Michelin tires against the Michelin man. Makes sense they don't do that much damage. Slashes are much better, but when it throws up that black flame ring, we ring for the ring. Again, we're just trying to keep the stance pressure from falling away too much. Fully charged attacks are better for building that up, and we can get those in pretty safely sometimes until we mess up the phase two transition and get rolled out. But he just stops. I'm alive! Yeah! yeah! Of course! <laughs> Few more hits, bada bing, bada boom, stance break, and a bleed. All those whiffs? Those were tactical. I was making sure we didn't break the stance until phase two. That's how huge my brain is. I'm lying. That was pure dumb luck. That unlocks the second half of Volcano Manor, and we can get another Stone Sword key from the shortcut. It immediately gets spent on the Fog Gate. There's good shit in here. A Critical Hit Talisman that boosts our crits by 17%, a Rune Arc, and of course the Somber Stone 7. With a 9 and an 8 from the Dragon Barrel, we can get the Halo Scythe up to plus 9. Now that's what I call ooh-worthy. Back to the farm. It's so much smoother. A jump attack and four-ish attacks kill this clean rot knight every time. We get a helmet on Nidorino, or... 33 if you don't like Pokemon. Wearing it without any other armor kind of looks like we're doing PG-13 nudity, like the opening of Austin Powers 2. I know we're all just always thinking about Austin Powers 2. This is still going a little slow and we can make it a bit faster with more silver pickles, but almost all of them are locked behind a boss or two. Most are locked behind Margit. He's got 40% holy resistance, but that's no match for our holy tires. Blam, 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 blam. Guess he got a few hits in, but it really is just kind of a steamroll. Margit, of course, is the Omen King, an illusory copy of Merica and God child who's holding down Lindell despite feeling nothing but hatred from the Erd Tree. But who cares? We're here for Gostok, a guy who traps people in a room with someone else who kills them. And more specifically, we're here for Gostok's pickle. After he pops the gate open, we finish him off and get one silver pickle for free. Three more when we give the bell bearing to the Twin Maidens. Let's roll. Next batch of farming, we get the sword on Vulpix, dex number 37, and the chest piece on Golbat, dex number 42. And, uh, another Halo Scythe. I mean, Halo 2 is definitively better than Halo 1. 
fun. The power stance moveset is cool, like dual wielding needlers, which you could do in Halo 2, but it's not what we need. At Polyworld X number 61, we're out of silver pickles and have to get some more, or just farm with worse odds. With the pickles, we're at a 4.7% drop rate on the armor pieces. We only have the boots and the gauntlets left, too. It might not seem like much, but that's closer to 1 in 20 instead of 1 in 33. It just sounds better when you say it like that. So we have to ride the elevator all the way back up to Altus because I forgot to get the grace like a dingus. It's fine, we'll need to come back through here anyway later. On the way to the Sage's Cave, we can fight Gilka. More accurately, we erase her from the game. We kill her so hard, I'm not sure she's in Elden Ring anymore. Check your copy at home, but I think she got erased from every universe. Like I said, Sage's Cave is where I'm going. There's some silver fireflies we can use, but we can't get out of the cave till we kill one of the two bosses. One of the bosses is an invisible black knife assassin. The other one is an old man with a snail. Hmm. Which one? The old man and the snail. Just some birds now. We're farming to farm like a farming nesting dream. Inception's a movie about dreams, but the dreams in dreams is called nesting dreams and the lore Inception is planting an idea in the lore. Don't at me, fake Inception fans. Learn your Inception lore. I think it's going to be important in the Mikola DLC. Back to farming. We immediately get a second helm and a second sword. And finally, get the griefs. Now we just need the gauntlets. Instead, a second armor piece and a second pair of boots. Triples of the sword in case I want to hold one in my mouth, I guess. Like Sanjo from One Piece. One Piece enjoyers, smash that like button. Like for the Sanjo One Piece reference. Triples of the helm and triples of the halo sight. And triples of the boots. Triples makes it safe. No, triples is best. Yeah. Quadruples of the boots. Anybody need some boots? Finally, at Ghastly, Pokedex number 92, we get the gauntlets. So, let's figure out the lore of the Clean Rot Knights. The war scythe of the Clean Rot Knights who fought alongside Melania, Blade of Mikola. The Clean Rot Knights vowed to fight alongside Melania despite the inevitable, if gradual, putrefaction of their flesh. Their acceptance of their fate made these battles fiercest of all, mainly used as a backup weapon in combination with a long-handed armament. And apparently, they were undefeated in the Shattering War. Seems like these Clean Rot Knights were really good friends with Melania. Besties even? Dare I say, roommates. Melania has beef with a few of the Shardbearers. What if we settled the score, you know, for our roommate? Revenge is a dish best served cold, but it's also expensive, like beef tartare or baby seal meat. Let's get paid. Nerd Juice is blocking Patches. He can dodge our discs, but not our scythe, and Patches dies immediately. He thinks his shield can block holy damage. What a dork. Now we have gold pickles, which are mostly the same ingredients as silver pickles, but they give us 30% more runes when we kill stuff. More big runes in the abandoned cave. Just gotta go through the rot swamp, or as Melania would call it, a living room. Wonder who the boss is here. I guess the first one has a spear, which means it can block. Shouldn't it block with a shield? We don't have to feel bad for killing these two. They're sleeping on the job. At least the one in the swamp is patrolling, looking for Radon soldiers right outside the Commander O'Neill fight. I don't think these gals are doing so hot without Melania. Golden Scarab acquired. Now we'll get 56% more runes when paired with a pickle. You know who else drops a lot of runes? Dragons, like Grail. And it goes pretty much identically to the Smarag fight. We throw discs in their face until we run out of magic, then aim for the head. Super smooth. We actually get it done hitless. Two dragons in a row. Three if you count the dragon barrel one. Right down the road, there's a putrid avatar that also has a bunch of runes. As long as we don't get killed, we might even be able to kill it before the pickle from Grail ends. That got me a little too aggressive, so instead I got bonked. Embarrassing. Hopefully this avatar doesn't tell the goddess of rot. I don't want her to think we're a scrub. Oh, I know how to stop it from killing Melania. We'll kill it. But also we'll swap in the critical hit talisman to do more damage on stance breaks. These dudes resist holy and slashing damage the most, which just so happens to be the types of damage the Halo Scythe is dealing. Boom. Dead. Bunch of runes. For the holy tier, we run through Lurney a bit, kill Sauron, it's easy, Aragorn's just a big baby, and then fight an Erdtree avatar. The putrid avatar in the Dragon Barrow is scaled for endgame. This one's scaled for Lurnia. It's easier. Now, we're really ready to fight stuff. Godric insulted Melania's honor while she was marching to Caled, and she kicked his ass so hard that he had to start stapling arms to himself. He hides behind some graves as we're blasting in the rings. True to character, I guess. This guy's a coward. Angle it a little bit better, and we get him into phase two. Here we can show off another fun aspect of the Rings of Light. When you launch them out, you're still swinging the scythe. So while his dumb ass is trying to hit us with Dragonfire, we're just slicing him and blasting him at the same time. Yeah, Godric dead. I'm surprised 
Melania didn't finish the job. Maybe she took pity on him, I don't know. But Godric is not Melania's main enemy out in the world. That honor goes to her half-brother, Radon. So we're doing it differently than we normally do. Instead of summoning, it's mano e mano. Just ride up and turn perpendicular when he shoots the gravity arrows. Did you know if you back up, you can skip the arrow phase? Cute, did you know if you have some grit, you can just charge up to him and save time? I get in tight by the body. There's some empty space by the hilts of his big boy swords. We do get a few charged attacks in before phase two, slash is better than holy from the rings as Radon's best resistance is holy damage. I wonder if that's gonna be a continuing thing. Probably not, I'm sure it's just these early game bosses. He hops up, then hops down. We break him down and get a bleed while he can't move. Vengeance sated. That'll teach you to make our girlfriend, I mean our roommate, use 10% of her max power. That's all for stream one. Coming back for stream two, gotta get that sword up to plus 12. Even if its description basically says your halo scythe is better, probably just use that. Smithing stone bell bearing two is in the sealed tunnel and then we just buy them with money. Of course, every clean rot knight has the winged sword insignia, so let's pick that up from the Stillwater Cave. Who's the boss there? Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. Ugh, at this point we're strong enough that it's not even a fight. Maybe you don't like me getting over leveled and maxing out our gear because it makes stuff too easy, but hey, uh, why wouldn't I? I'm gonna level it up later anyway, and this lets videos come out every week. Since we killed two shard bearers, we can pick up a pocket for that talisman and then just go to the Weeping Peninsula. I added it to my to-do list because it's just so worth it. In five minutes, we can kill the Knight's Cavalry because it's funny, grab a sacred tier of faith boosting physic and two more sacred tiers. Bop, bop, our flask heals way more. Quick Raya Lucaria time. I don't think Melania actually has any beef with Renala. They're pretty separate, but we're doing all Membies, so she dies, just in case. The Red Wolf is fast, but we're much faster. We actually have a little more trouble with the abductor virgin outside apparently they didn't like my joke hey hey have sex have not with me <laughs> Moongrim isn't an issue, and neither is Renala. At least we'll talk about it, though, because she's a boss. Phase 1 is a one cycle. There's not much she can do once she's on the ground, and she doesn't do much better in Phase 2. Azur is easy to dodge, so fully charged R2. Then some missiles we dodge, and charge attack there. Hey, look, it's a Bloodhound Knight. Did you have fun watching that last week? She has 40% holy resistance, but straight up, if it's not 100%, we don't care. Renala is toast. What should we do now? Well, Melania's brother made his own tree, so I bet she'd love it if we burned down the old one. It's a little affectionate arson. Remember, if you want to woo someone special, commit arson. <laughs> There's a place we can buy some rune arcs, and if we're gonna go all Membees, we're going to need every one of them for Melania. She always knocks my confidence down a peg. Several pegs, actually. Google Melania pegs on your work computer for more information. Our confidence is going to be way higher after we hit the Tree Sentinel with the rings. Holy damage is his lowest elemental resistance, and his first attack leaves him vulnerable. So we're able to hit him into the phase transition, which also makes him vulnerable. What a fool. Time for the Royal Capital. Slashing the tree goes fine. Not great, but fine. Both of the duelists drop their helmet a three percent drop rate right in a row on the way to the ritual shield talisman so happy we're getting lucky now for the godfrey shade we back up and throw rings but he wants to chase us down and stomp rocks it's not a problem we're better at backing that thing up not even worth mentioning the black knife assassin unless you like watching them die really fast because it's funny it is kind of funny morgoth is next he's summoning holy light weapons to attack us from a distance who would do that we use our holy light weapons and attack him from a distance yeah i'm a hypocrite what else is new. Ran out of magic in phase two and I have to hit him with my weapon. Disgusting. And that's coming from someone who is fine with phase two being a fight in the lake of Morgoth's puke. Got grabbed. It's the first rule of Elden Ring. What a shame. But really just a reminder. If they don't have 80% holy resistance, I do not care. For Biden lands time, quick reminder to send out a tweet complaining about a problem you're in the best position to solve. My apartment is so filthy. Someone should do something about this. That's Joe Biden's Twitter in a nutshell. Mountaintops, so we grab the bell bearing three if we want to try the sword out later, but we basically just sprint to the fire giant. It takes 15 minutes. I ring up that ankle and then realize I want more magic for phase two, so I start slicing. Eventually, he just sort of takes it off. It's kind of like ripping off a hangnail that's almost fallen. The rings aren't quite enough to get us through phase two. He's got around 15% health. Gotta avoid some balls and get in between those thighs for a sloppier finish than I'd like. Hey, phrasing! We're ahead of schedule, and if we kill a few more bosses, it'll help our ranking at the end. Borealis is 
isn't as free as their siblings are, but it's still pretty free. Just damage it by throwing rings at the head and we take a little damage, so it's not hitless. The Death Rite Bird is like a dragon, but it's super weak to holy damage. We do holy damage, let's give it a shot, as long as nothing silly happens. Ow, ow. Oh my. See, now that's some bullshit. Okay, other time we win, just less baloney. Niall stole one of the keys to Melania's place, so we have to enter the castle's hole and get things done. We don't have a spirit ash yet, and there are three people to fight here. Well, wait, two. Oh, never mind, it's a uh, one-on-one. -on -one. Niall can close gaps pretty well, but we're still able to get our rings off as much as possible. And then we finish things with the scythe. There's a bit of trading, but that's to be expected. Halleg Tree 1 acquired. The old man holding the other piece is easy to kill, but I ask WWMD, what would mother, I mean, what would Melania do? We kill the perfumer instead and just talk it out until he dies on his own a second later. Hidden path to the Halleg Tree is a go. We hit the consecrated snowfield, but then I remembered we can farm pickles faster if we grab the silver scale talisman, which had 75 to your discovery. Except Except after we drop onto an invisible legend, grab it from a chest, we can't warp out without killing an area boss. Good news though, the area boss is a mimic tier, so we just drop our weapons, then hot swap them on. She can't hit us, but like, stop rolling. It's annoying. Now we can hit the snowfield and blast Anastia down for the final somber stone we need to max out the Halo Scythe. Makes the Putrid Avatar easy. Just kidding, the Putrid Avatar's moveset makes the Putrid Avatar easy. It's slow and silly, but it's still worth a butt ton of runes and will give us the combo tier to pair with our Winged Sword Insignia. It's twice as good as the Winged Sword Insignia on its own and they stack. Ordina is a bit of a mess. We got grabbed by a Black Knife Assassin on the way up the last ladder, but we got it fine and we're in Melania's apartment building. She lives in a tree, so crunchy, really into flowers. It out. We gotta get down, swag jump across, and get ready for Loretta. It's a meaty Loretta, so we can make her bleed, but it's better to just hit her with the light. You know your significant other's friend who's like weirdly possessive of them? They don't want you hanging out with your partner and try and shoot you with a bunch of lasers? Has that ever happened to you? Uh, that's Loretta. And that's Loretta beaten. Finally, we get into LFL and can kill a Clean Rot Knight. And another Clean Rot Knight in front of the Clean Rot Knight who will add the dew to our duo. Clean Rot Knight Finlay, the Spirit Ash, from the description. Finlay was one of the few survivors of the Battle of Aeonia, who, in an unimaginable act of heroism, carried the slumbering demigod Melania all the way back to the Halleck Tree. She managed the feat alone, fending off all manner of foes along the way. Wow, she put Melania on her back from Kaelid to the Halleck Tree? Girl is down bad. Weird to think that we haven't used a Spirit Ash yet. Also, I guess we could have just used the Mimic tier. That would also make a Finlay with our plus 10 Scythe and more health, but I did this. Also, shouldn't we be using the Spear and be the other Clean Rot Knight? We're summoning the one with the Scythe. Now, if you really care about that, I think you need to get... Oh, we died from the Royal Revenant going to the next grace. Anyway, let's level up this gal so we can get to being pals. Carry a manor time. It's bad enough for Loretta to get in our way while she's alive, but now she's blocking us as a ghost? Let it go. Schedule a movie night with Mal. We both think Mal's the best. Ronnie and the gang say hello when we enter our roommate's brother's hole and find a version of ourselves without weapons. I guess that just means hand stuff. We use the sword. Apparently, thrusting swords are good at poise chaining NPCs, but I don't think so. The damage is awful, and we have really good dexterity. It certainly does suck. Hey, while we're here, let's kill a moose. It's on our to-do list for some reason. It's one of the Remembrance bosses, and it's one of the very few bosses in this game week to Holy, so it dies pretty fast, but this last hit, as it's teleporting, should kill it. I think it has a sliver of health lock while teleporting. I don't think you can kill it while it's teleporting. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't crack the codes here, I just make the funny Michelin tires hit the moose. Get the knife for Ronnie and the Glove War 10, then run through half the manor again because I skipped two graces like a silly goose. Get the statue for the study hall, head to the Incel River Main, visit Phalanx from Demon's Holes, and get the last Glove Warts we need to max out Finlay. The only way we could love Mal more is if there was two of us. Hey, we're here, so I guess we'll kill a space bug. It's on our to-do list, also for some reason. Through the Lake of Rot, we enjoy the immunity of our Clean Rot Knight set and the healing from the Blessings of the Erd Tree spell. It heals 12 HP per second. It's close to the buff that the Clean Rot Scythe Knights do. Against Estelle, our Michelin tires keep us in a nice middle distance so we don't get chomped or lasered. Estelle mostly just whiffs. 
and we get the win. Oh my god, I forgot to burn down the Erd Tree. I'm so forgetful. It's like we didn't leave the oven on when we went to work, and that was worse somehow. Rip on through for Amazula and get to the Godskin Duel, who will probably be pretty rough. We summon Bernie. Incidentally, Burlington, Vermont was sort of a sanctuary city for trans people all the way back in the 80s. Google that on your work computer. It's not a silly, dirty joke. It's just a nice story and a reminder that Bernie has always been based. He'll solo the Apostle, while Finlay and I double-team the Noble. Finlay is smart. Most of the Ashes have the brain power of an Atari Jaguar, but Finlay is computing in the year 3000. When the Noble rolls out, she stands back and shoots rings at him. We also stand on the column and shoot. The rollout is a great move that's easy to punish? What? Bernie dies, and Finlay and Arya left to finish the skinny. They have 40 holy resistance, but who cares? We're strong. Chunky again, skinny again, and they both die. Probably because we're slashing them, and the slashing is good. If you thought our discs were destructo before, we have a way to make them much better. But we have to talk to Alex first. There's a Tibia Mariner on the way, I just waste, it's weak to holy damage, and a Magma Worm, because it would have bothered us while talking to our buddy. He wants to fight us in Faramazula, make the swag jump fast, Pretend you didn't see that. Alex tries to spar with us, but we go a little too hard. To be fair, I don't think you're supposed to use Destructo Discs in a training arc. But we get the Alexander Jar Shard for 15% more damage from Ashes of War. Quick bird run, then check out the damage against the Draconic Smee Sentinel. It's off the hook! No wonder Melania made us captain. If we lost, that would be a real crock. Malekith has 80% Holy Resistance, the highest of any boss, I'm sure. We bring in Finlay and she buffs us because actually she can get us buffed with her buff. We don't need to MacGyver it with a combo of spells. Hell yeah. Oh, she can also rot people by throwing up on the floor. I think Malekith has really low rotten poison resistance because he only has about 5,000 health per phase and it resets when the phase transitions. But Finlay must have eaten some bad clams because she's throwing up all over the place in phase two as well. <laughs> It's not the Scythe has slash damage, that's better, though still 35% resistance. Maybe Malika should just have more health instead of weirdly high resistances. It's fine. He gets hacked up and we can head back to the capital and say hi to Melania's family. You took me home to meet your mom and dad. Gideon isn't part of the family, but he did kill a lot of Albanerics and try to find Mal's apartment. I don't like that. I forgot to switch the tears after Malika. Don't think stance pressure is gonna help much with Gideon, who doesn't have stance. It's fine though, it's Gideon, and we can use the runes from him to level up that sword a bit more. That sword we're gonna use at some point. I guess Godfrey also isn't part of Mal's family, he's just her mom's ex and her dad's ex, whatever, he's blocking her mom and her dad. Finlay comes in and we back up and throw, he just sort of gets distracted trying to bounce back between us and her. I thought he was close to phase two so I wanted to switch to the scythe and maybe get some pressure going but he just doesn't go and we have to trade a bunch getting him there. My strategy is justified. As phase two starts, we lock him down and then he wants to go to phase 2.5. Silly goose move. It's slow and we can kill him. I don't want to kill God just yet because that's going to be pretty miserable. So instead we'll hit the Valiant Gargoyles because uh, my all remembrances, remember? <laughs> The first one is toast before the second one even drops. Just embarrassing. That means that we're fighting one at a time, and that's easy with our Michelin tires that are stronger than God. The God I'm afraid to fight. Fia Champs next, they ain't got no health. If you remember the broken weapons run, we let Finlay solo them at the end, so now it's Finlay and us, a stronger Finlay. That's pretty free. We're just so strong. Nothing's gonna kill us. Ah, oh, pit. Forgot to send the elevator back up. We'll go for Placidious Axe now. Staying further away and spamming rings is great. Finlay is close for some reason, which I guess means that her big brain AI knew she needed to play tank. Seriously, I don't know what the devs were feeding her, but they should have saved some for the other spirit ashes. Toilet paper phase is covered in dookie and teleports and slashes and... Oh, okay. Omega laser. Gamers. We dodged it. I've never dodged it before. It's so sporadic and huge, but I am solid on the sticks today, other than the elevator shaft. Sadly, that toasts Finlay, and we're out of magic, so we gotta get in there with the scythe to close it out. The carrying study all takes a long time, but we grab the curse mark of death, then hug Fia a bunch before we do the Fortis Axe fight. I'll just sort of, you know, cut through that a bunch. This is another boss with 80% holy resistance, but I'm sure it's the last one. Oh, also, if you have something to hit the head, deals 100% more damage. Basically 40% holy resistance, then if 
you had, well, I don't know, a series of tires you can throw that track better than a VCR. It makes it pretty easy. He really doesn't have a good method of chasing you down. Melania will be happy to know we killed her asshole brother's dragon. What's that? Melania got along great with Godwin? They're best friends who love and protect Mikola together? Oops, my bad. Well, I know she hates her parents. They're the worst, and they're the reason everything's terrible in the world. They also have 80% holy resistance. So instead of rings, let's use the sword. And so the sword makes the most out of our 55 dexterity, let's get the repeating thrust ash of war from the Knight's Cavalry in Limgrave. Hot take, this sword should already have the repeating thrust instead of impaling thrust. My justification? The Queen Rot Knights use repeating thrust, and they don't use impaling thrust. And they all have the winged sword insignia, which would benefit from combos. Anyway, Radagon time. This sword is maxed out. We've almost got hard capped dexterity. How's the damage? Is that it? Guess there's a reason it's a backup weapon. He bashes us down. Next attempt also goes pretty bad. We get grabbed and I quit out. I hate this dude. I've gotten a lot better at the Elden Beast. So much of Radagon's AoEs on every attack. Eh, they just drive me up a wall. Third try, we go in for more R2s to get the combo activating our winged sword and thorny tears. Much better move. He goes down a lot faster. Only two flasks left for the Elden Beast. Not great. Remember though, I've gotten better at Elden Beast. Combos make the damage ramp up. After hopping over the Elden Ring, we get in and break the stance as it goes for Elden Stars. While the stars do end up coming out, we can use the iframes of the crit to shrug off a lot of the damage. Another stance break gives us time to combo for the win. Now, we don't need Melania's parents' blessing to propose because the bodies ain't got no souls in them. Let's go from roommate to wifey material. Wearing a ring but ain't gonna be no misses I'm matching diamonds for six of my it is tradition to give a gift of some kind for an engagement, but Mal isn't materialistic. She's violent, so let's kill the brother she probably hates most. Eleonora first for the Moog tier. It's so fast, only worth mentioning because we've got the tier. Then go for the Penguin Noble, but FromSoft didn't realize that penguins and polar bears don't live in the same place. For a second, it seems like the bear is on our side. He even grabs the Penguin Noble, but since we can't get on our horse while invaded, we can't outrun the bear. And it won't ever put aggro on the penguin, even if it can hit the penguin. So the bear eats us. Next time I come back in and angle it right so we only have to fight the penguin noble. It's very easy. We're very strong. In the cave of the Mogwin Palace we buy the rune arcs. Melania is probably gonna want to wrestle after we propose and I'm gonna need all of the rune arcs for that. Mog time. He kidnapped Mikola. And worse, he's trying to steal our thunder by getting engaged right before we do. Mog, you monster. Finlay's buff also gives us more fire resistance, so the dude's blood fire won't do as much damage. Hey, you need a ring for Mikola? Have 50 of them, you son of a bitch. Phase 2 starts and you're not gonna believe this, we throw more rings. What a concept. He's dead. We'll send someone to pick up Mikola later. Can't quite propose yet. Apparently another one of Melania's brothers is running around eating gods. Melania is the goddess of rot, and our life together would be so much better if she isn't being digested. To kill Rykard, we've gotta go to the Spirit Caller Cave first and get comboed to death by the first member of the Godskin Boo. It was much better attempt to, even if the noble goes for two different rollouts. We get the Godskin Swaddling Cloth and can now heal every time we get a combo going. It's gonna make the Rykard fight much better. You might think we can just spam the Michelin tires at the snake head, but like, kind of? It's just better to get in the magma. Phase two is always worse. I always talk about how bad his hurt box is, but something else I'm realizing this time, I can't see what he's doing. Hell phase begins with giant exploding skulls and I can't really get what's going on. If you're not out of the magma and rolling around, you're gonna get hit by all those explosions and die. First try, I quit out. Second try, really bad. I'm hitting the leg in phase two since it's the most consistent place to hit him. But the timing is terrible. He activates hell phase and then we break his stance, which puts the leg in this weird triangle shape that stops us from getting out. Effectively, his stance break puts us in an unbreakable grapple while he's doing his ultimate attack. Neat. Third try just works. Great. Rykard stinks if you don't use the Serpent Hunter. I've legit thought about taking him out of my All Remembrance runs more so than Melania. Melania is really hard and kills us a lot more than Rykard, but Rykard fights are all the same. You either use the Serpent Hunter or you just get the healing tier and jump into the magma and hit the side of a snake. It's bad. Anyway, Godric Great Rune run through LFL, get the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for 20% more physical resistance. We're ready to propose and probably wrestle. And not in the don't worry, Mikola, your sister and I were just wrestling in a way that's only for adults way. No, Melania wants to spar. It's the final test to prove ourselves to her. I'm 
I'm not even quitting out for the first fight. She can dive in and we'll just back up to get Finlay in. Don't worry, everyone's okay with us bringing in a third person. Melania is fast enough to dodge most of the rings, but not all of them. Even though she has 40% holy resistance, they still do fine damage. More importantly though, they have the range to help us handle Melania's worst move the ducky dance. Since we're far enough away when she jumps up, we can run away for the first two and roll through the third. We're not going to have any magic left for phase two, so when we die, I think we'll spec into more blue flasks. Obviously, we're going to lose a few times. First run does go pretty great, though. We dodge a second ducky dance, and hey, why don't we dodge a third ducky dance? Sure, we're in phase two. She doesn't dance as much when she goes god mode, so melee works better here anyway. After she gives us some flowers, so sweet, we charge in R2. Worth noting, she is the only boss where phase two doesn't reset her resistances, so it's great that we didn't bleed her at all in phase one and saved the bleeds for phase two. Big crit and keep that pressure up with all the hits. Remember how I said Finley is so smart? She's basically at full health since she knows not to go in. Whirlwind Slash is my favorite to dodge and we stay Dance breaker into the second onion. Finlay goes in, taking advantage of her extra health to tank through that onion and help us get closer to the wind. She's so smart. Uh-oh, it's the rotter foul dance. But we live. Melania does not. Well, actually, no. Okay, she 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 does. She's just taking a nap in the flower now. Taking a nap. Pretty normal after uh, wrestling. We close things out with all remembrances at seven hours and 53 minutes, killing 48 bosses and only dying 16 times. I think it's worth noting how many of those deaths were just silly falls because I forgot elevators or with the swag jump and from the farming. If you just booted up the game and had someone trade you in the weapons or preloaded it because you're a master hacker, you'll save a ton of time and get to rock the Halo Scythe and all its power from the beginning. This fighting style isn't gonna be for everyone though. It's not really for me. It's a little too hang in the back and spam Kind of feels like I'm playing a caster, which, you know, I've been pretty clear I don't enjoy. It ends up right behind Mario in the A tier. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding more secret starting classes all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's where we get to keep most of the money. And also there's three exclusive videos over there. Like full episodes, just kind of on niche topics I'm not sure would perform well on YouTube. Oh, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video.